Dear participant, I will introduce you to the second week. Welcome to the second week of our course. At the end of the first week, you have a plan how to teach the content in a virtual environment. In a conventional setting, you would teach in a classroom, bring the learning resources as printed documents, maybe show a slideshow or a video to illustrate the concepts. More importantly, you would be able to address the learners by explaining them directly what to do, asking them stimulating questions and launching discussions. Let's have a look at what this looks like in an online course. We'll go to uh, week two. Teaching online, we have to build a learning environment first, consisting of digital learning resources that are stored in the cloud. Of a website with, learning, with a learning path, with didactic instructions about what to do, with assignments and discussion forums for the participants to communicate with you and among the class. Now let's have a look at the objectives of the second week. The objective of the second week are to create a website for your course and to build a learning path for the students to follow. We will, we want to find, download and adapt learning resources in digital form. Or we create digital learning resources such as slideshows, video tutorials, quizzes and tests on our own. Now let's go to the learning path. Nowadays, the internet is offering plenty of open education resources free for you to use. Here you can hone your strategies to find such open educational resources quickly and efficiently. I have prepared a list of open educational resources that I found on the internet. Unfortunately, not all open educational resources are of good quality. In this section, we will compare the quality of examples of open educational resources. and we will develop quality criteria. In order to use open educational resources in your course, we often want to download documents, videos, etc. There are very useful tools to download documents, pictures, videos, audios. Once you have captured such an educational resources, you can adapt it to your own needs and use it in your course. Sometimes we can't find a specific learning resource. It's great that we can nowadays create our own educational resources without the hassle of installing a multimedia lab. All you need is a notebook, maybe a good microphone would be useful. We first focus on creating slideshows in PowerPoint. You, more, you may already be familiar with the technical aspects of creating a slideshow. We also consider how a learning object must be designed for effective learning. For recording videos, you can use a professional tool like OBS, an open source software. For using the powerful OBS, you have to climb a rather steep learning curve at the beginning. 
much easier and also for your cost. You can run a Zoom session, create a presentation using application sharing and record the whole session. Then you can upload it to, the, uh, to, uh, to YouTube and finally embed it in your course, in your website. Performative learning tests, I suggest using quizzes. You will find plenty of ready to use quizzes. You can also adapt or you create your own quiz from scratch. Then we will use Google Forms to create tests that can be designed with the ability to correct the response automatically where possible. Quizzes and tests can improve substantially the effectiveness of your course. The theory of learning by retrieval practice explains why. In this second week, you will acquire or upgrade necessary skills to design an interesting and effective online course. The best way to do so is just by using these techniques and tools and apply it in your teaching. Do not hesitate to engage in discussions and ask questions. I wish you much enjoyment and success. Bye-bye, everybody. Until next week.